So the goal of this screencast is to make an energy flow diagram, that's what we call it, for the skateboarder on, in the skate park. You guys with me? So I'll just call this how to make energy flow diagram. Are you guys good? And these are actually really useful. First problem, oh, it didn't even show up up there. Oh, yeah, it did. Okay, good. First thing you do in the middle is you make a circle, okay? Everybody's good. You can look this side now. And then what? define your system. This is your bank where the energy is stored. What's your system here? Help me. Skateboarder and? Good. You could, some people like saying skateboarder and earth. That's fine. Some people like saying skateboarder and gravity field. That's fine. We're talking about the earth's gravity field. So either way is good. All right. Plus gravity field. Again, I don't mind either way. I'm happy. Now on the left side of the screen is going to be like a beginning moment in time. Okay. And you have to choose this moment. And you have to choose it cleverly. That's the whole art of doing energy problems, is choosing your moments in time cleverly. Beginning moment, A. And then I'll call this ending moment, B. Are you guys with me? These are two different moments in time. They could be an hour, could be a day, could be a year, could be a couple seconds between these two moments. Okay? Ending moment, in time, ending moment B, okay? Actually, I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to change that. Ending moment B, I'll just call it. Everybody's happy? So I'm going to draw two dotted lines to show that these are two moments in time. I'm, I'm going to draw these two moments, okay? And then, again, between these two moments is a time interval, and we don't even know we don't even care what that time exactly is right now, all right? But I do know that between two moments in time, there's a time interval. Are you guys happy? So time went by between those two moments. All right, if you're going to be clever about this and choose wisely your first moment in time, I'd like you to talk with the people around you and give me one moment when I should pause the video when it's easy to count the energy. That's the key. You want, you want it to be easiest to count the energy. Okay? Why don't you talk it over? I'll pause this. So what most of you are saying now is our moments in time should be when the skater is at the highest position and when the skater is at the bottom moving the fastest. You guys with me there? So... I'll make my, I'll do that. I'll make my first moment, and I think you're getting the point. I'll make my first moment when the skater is at the top. You could have easily made it when the skater is at the bottom. It's not a problem. Either way would work. It's the same thing. So there's my skater. And when the skater is at the top, what's the speed? How fast is he going, or she? Zero. All right, so I'm going to make a note that the speed is zero because speed is important for K. I'm going to make a note that the height is H because the height in the gravity field is important for you, for potential. Are you guys good? Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm going to make a cute little bar graph with K and U adding them up. And this U is called gravitational potential energy, so I'm going to put a little G there. Um, is there any K at the top? When the skater is at the highest position not moving, is there any K? No. no. Notice we can just cross out K. Is there any U? I'm going to let you make up numbers now. Make up a simple, small number. Go, yell it out. Five. Five? All right. So you get to make up a number here. Five blocks. You guys good? So I got five blocks. So I got five blocks of gravitational potential energy. You guys good? Yeah. All right. Then at the end, the ending moment, where's the skater? At the bottom. The bottom? Skater's moving the fastest now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll make a note of that. V max. And then I'll say... Height 
is now zero. So that now I'm just going to add my K and U again. Are you guys digging how you're just an accountant? Yeah. You're just accounting for the energy? What happened? How do I, is there any K or is there any U? Which, what happened here? What do I do? Is there any U? No more U. So I'll cross that one out. And now the five blocks that were in gravitational potential energy are now in? Um, the last thing I want to show you, one, two, three, four, five, right? We should have the same number of blocks. We are ignoring air and friction, so I'm going to write that, because this is only true if we ignore air resistance and friction. Those forces would have taken energy out of our system. Are you guys good? Um, I'm going to put an equal sign here. And you can see how we, re we have a beautiful equation that says UG in the beginning equals K in the end. So we are actually able to get an equation out of this too. You guys like it? And this will be the game. This is how we do it. So I'll give you some practice problems where you can try to do your own energy flow diagrams and that's what we whiteboard tomorrow. Are you guys good? Yeah. Done deal. And you have this to look at if you need it. I'll put this video on Classroom.